Hi, I'm Archbishop David Lim. Today I'm going to talk about the fairness of God, partiality of God. Is God fair? Is God partial? Can God order our lives and do whatever He likes in our lives? That makes me turn to scriptures of what's said in the Bible. For instance, in Romans 2.11, it says, For there is no partiality with God. That means God is fair. He does everything to the fullness. He is doing things to perfection. And if God is perfect, then what He does is perfect. But in Isaiah 29.16, we read, You turn things around. That means the, the sinners, the people around us. You turn things around. Shall the potter be considered as equal with the clay? That what is made would say to his maker, He did not make me. Or what is formed say to him who formed it? He has no understanding. Isaiah 45 verse 9. Woe to the one who quarrels with his maker. An earthware vessel among the vessels of the earth. Will the clay say to the potter, What are you doing? Or the thing you are making say, He has no hands. Of, of course, the maker has hands. The potter has hands. And God has hands as well. Why should we look at God in such a way? Because we are talking about sin. The sinful nature in us makes us alien to God, makes us think things in imperfect ways, in things amiss, in lawless ways. That's its sin. In Isaiah 64 verse 8, it rectifies the argument, saying that by now, O Lord, you are our Father. You are the, we are the clay and you our potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. No argument. We are the workmanship of God. We are the workmanship of Christ. We are the clay, clayware, made into clayware from the clay by our creator, our maker, the Lord. I have a clay teapot here made of clay and the maker chose to smooth it up and make it look like a bamboo shape article the same kind of maker from china also make this a clay doll also for tea ceremony as well so both items are for tea ceremony but they are very different. This is a doll, a figurine, and this is a teapot. This one we can contain tea and drink from it. This one we play with it. If the clay is made to a doll, can it say that, well, I want to be something else. I want to be a teapot and jump back to a teapot. Can it have memory? And can it answer back or fight back? Answering back is actually a way of fighting back. Can it answer back to the maker and say, well, I don't want to be a doll, I want to be a teapot. Or vice versa. Can the teapot suddenly leap back to this shape and say, well, well I, I was made a doll and I don't want to be a teapot, so I just get back to the, the doll. No, nope, it can't do that because it has no such control of itself. It has no mind of itself. And for the same kind of clay from earth, we can also make a lamp. This one can burn oil and gives light. And that one, the teapot, can contain tea. The tea is a liquid that can put out the fire, and the fire cannot be put in the pot to be a drink. And then we can also paint the clay wear and impress onto it a pattern and we can make small items 
um, bigger items, and they have no control of itself. We decide as the potters, as the makers, we decide what they will be like and what they will serve. We impute the purpose into the items. And this is the meaning of the potter and the clay. And we sign our signature onto our clayware and claim it ours. Signature at the bottom, claim it ours. That's our handiwork. And the creation cannot argue with the creator. This is the relationship with mankind and God. And in sin, we have liberals and liberal-minded people who think that they are not clay. They must not be reasoned as clay in relationship with the potter. They want to be mankind. This is how we have the new modern talk of equality. Equalities. People want equality. We talk about human rights. Yan Kun. That everybody is to be the same. But this is not the design of God. This is not the purpose of God. We are all made into whatever He likes for His purpose. We live out His purpose to the fullness and this is our joy and our peace. Uh, let me read a few verses more for our understanding. Now we jump to Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 6. Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as this potter does, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The Lord is telling us that He is in control. In Jeremiah, the book of sadness, that Israel rebelled and not serving God, and in the wrath of God, God judged them and sent them to the enemies, to exile. And yet, God is reasoning with people that the relationship is like the clay and the potter. There is supposed to be no argument. God wills what He wills. So in our rebellion, in our modern time of talks of equality, missions of equality, human rights, God is still presenting this argument of Jeremiah to us. That we are not so special that we can do whatever we like. We are not equal to the maker. The clay is not equal to the maker. And the clay cannot actually say to the maker that he has no hands, as if he is deciding on what the maker is supposed to be, as if he is the intelligent one. This is sin. Sin turns the table round and turns the world upside down. Last verse I want to share with you here now is Romans chapter 9, verse 21. Or does not the potter have a right over the clay? to make from the same lump one vessel for honourable use and another for common use? Romans is in the New Testament. So we have this verse of the New Testament to show that the same argument exists both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. That God wants us to see that it's not for us to criticise God and to reason whether God is partial and whether God is fair in this way and that way to this person and that person. He has the right to deal with each individual in a different manner. One is made to be an honourable vessel and the other one is made for common use. All serve their own purpose. And in our submission, subjection to God, we live out to His purpose. May God richly bless us all in submitting and subjecting ourselves to our Lord God. Amen.